What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. On the docket today is checking for the Prepper Cabin and then we're a little bit low on calories so if you watch these back to back with the previous episode you'll probably be a lot better acclimated to what's going on than people that have waited 24 hours to see this but basically our hunger is running away a little bit rampant and unfortunately our caloric stores are looking a bit low. We're going to try and make the run back home today but the first thing that I wanted to do is actually when you get to the unnamed pond over here there's like a little path that goes around the back of it and I think there's a possible prepper cache up there. And you know what? If there is one, I'm just going to eat all the food out of it right now. I should probably hold back on running considering my propensity for spraying my ankles in this game over and over and over and over again. But we've got places to go, people to see, things to accomplish. And so I'm not really too stoked about taking it slow either. Especially since if we don't make it to any of these other places that we need to go, we will probably die out here in the middle of the snow from like ice coming out of our eyes or some other horrible affliction. Let's see here. Is it ever here? No. Ocular cryo death. That sounds way more awesome than just dying of icy eyes. Ocular. <laughs> Ocular necro cryo death. Awesome. Super cool. It's the coolest power in the entire world. Oh good, there's a wolf up here. Hello, friend wolf. Brother wolf, what are you doing up here in the hills? Just doing wolfy things? That's understandable. I would do wolfy things too if I was a wolf. It only seems natural. I don't see any hatches or anything up here, but honestly we don't really have time to give this one a thorough search. So I may come back to it later. Supposedly if it's going to be here, it's up here in the hills somewhere. I don't see it though. But this is the one that people vouch for like over and over and over again. They're like, oh if you go up behind the unnamed pond, sometimes it's up there. Like everybody says this one. And so I give it a little bit more of a try here. I've heard that crouching and going down hills makes it better, but that really sort of seems like speculation. I think it's one of those things that nobody's actually verified. They just sort of repeat it over and over again, like blowing in a Nintendo cartridge makes it all better. I swear that was magic, though. It worked back in the 80s. People say it doesn't work now and it destroys your cartridges, and they've scientifically proved that it destroys your cartridges. But I think that there's just been some magic lifted from the verse that no longer exists that was in play in the but 80s. make it. Because back in those days, it worked every time. I don't care what anybody says. It always worked. And it totally wasn't perceptional bias either. You blew in the cartridge and it worked. Meh. It was all fizzly and had all kinds of weird, like, screen artifacts and things first. And then you blew on it and it worked just fine. You were like, yeah. And you were successful at being an 80s kid. Oh, good. It's not even cold now. That's a plus. Could definitely be a whole lot worse then. This rock over here should be the one that the deer is behind, I think. That one right there. I'm going to check behind this rock just in case. But I think it's this rock over here is going to have a dead deer behind it. And then if we go over the hill, we're going to be at the trapper's cabin. And then if we go over that hill, it's going to put us back towards our base. For right now, I don't think there's any reason for me to go back to the trapper's cabin. I'm thinking about it right now. And I don't think there's any reason I should go back there. Some people have said that they found the bunker behind the trapper's cabin. But that's an easy location to get to, so I think if we can stop off and we can just... Oh, the deer disappears. No, it's up here. Never mind. The deer disappears. Now, isn't that weird? Gonna make me shed some tears because the animal died. Oh, there it is. Meh, meh, meh. Someday I'll start my deer-related rap career. The world will quake and shudder in the... <laughs> God, it will quake and shudder in the wake of my deer-related rapping album. I don't think there's going to be a huge market for that because obviously deer aren't going to buy it because they don't want to hear songs about themselves getting shot. Then again, gangster rap sells and gangster get, gangsters get shot all the time, so I don't know. And gangsters buy gangster rap, so meh. Maybe deer will buy it. I'll spawn a whole new generation of deer that think they're hard as hell. See deer walking around out in the middle of nowhere with tattoos running up their arms and up their necks. Just be like, what? <laughs> Straight deer out the 808, son. You don't know me. You don't know me. Spend my night out at the club looking for does. But really, though. <laughs> it's a good thing that I entertain myself. I swear. That's like the ultimate skill in life is can you entertain yourself? See, you guys are just being... If I think something, I just say it here. But I laugh. Like the other night, I woke myself up. I laughed about this thing that I was thinking about. I just started laughing. I was laying in bed and started chuckling about it. Woke my girlfriend up. And I'm like, oops, sorry. She's like, what? And I was like, I thought of a, th I thought of a funny thing. I'm sorry. A funny thing happened in my brain, and I laughed about it. 
Like the things that you hear here at the Nerd Castle, this goes on all day, every day in my brain. The only difference between like when I'm not on camera and when I am on camera is when I'm not on camera, it just plays out in my head and then I laugh about it. And maybe I write it down in a notepad if I find it particularly funny. Oh, there it is. It's popping up with Hungry. Awesome. Let's make our way back home. We've got a long walk, and I think, oh, we've got 240 calories left. So basically, we've got, like, that protein bar left that we ate, like, 25 episodes ago. Just, it's the last little pocket of fat on the side of our ass flank. And so once we eat our way through that, we will officially be way too skinny. For right now, we're skinny, but we have, like, this weird, like, corpuscle thing on our butt cheek. It's just that extra storage. It's like the camel's hump. But instead of storing, like, water or whatever, it's just, like... A giant lump of fat molecules on the side of our ass that for whatever reason have not been depleted yet. I wonder if I, I could qualify for a disability. I should check I should check and see if we can get some form of like survivor's disability for that. You could eat anything. You could eat anything, huh? <laughs> I could think of a couple mean tests for you. I mean, just throwing it out there. Eat that tree. <laughs> Lick it. You know you want it. This tastes so awful. He's got such an edgy voice. I really wish we had gotten that wolf in the previous episode. It actually makes me really, really sad. I really, really wish that we had gotten that deer, and unfortunately, we did not. It disappoints me. It disappoints me. But, you know. Hmm, there's a deer right there. Could blast his little brown ass, but nope. Oh, well. Oi! Hey, deer, what you doing in my hood? Don't you know? I don't know my survivor's name, but I was going to be like, this place reps whatever my name is, and I can't remember what my name is now. I could go scavenge for more wood, but I think we've got a decent supply inside, so I'm just going to let her go for now. Just walk away. Just walk away. So good. Did Uncle Cracker do that song? I can't remember. There are a lot of things that are foggy in my memory at this point about musical history. Pretty sure it was Uncle Cracker that did that song. Maybe. Oh, hell. Please tell me we have food in here. Oh, thank God. Okay. I was actually really, really concerned about that. <laughs> I was thinking if I actually overestimated how much meat we had left, I was like, this is going to be a real bad night because we're going to have to dig into our supplies over here. I mean, there's a deer right outside. I guess I could hunt him and cure him real fast. And by cure him, I mean rip his hide off of his body and turn it into leather. Typically, it's not. We're not giving the we're not giving the deer medical attention. He's not sick. We're not curing any of his diseases, his deer-related afflictions, but. Let's go ahead and light this thing on up. We've got cedar firewood, so I'm just going to give it a go. Tinder plug, cedar firewood. We're more than leveled up at this point to the extent that I don't think we really have to worry about not lighting fires any longer so long as we have cedar with us. Even lighting from default, we're at 73%, so we should be able to light just about anything on fire. I'm going to start with two hours, and we'll work from there because our water supply is perfectly fine at the moment. It's just our food supply that needs to be rounded out a bit. I also think that my cat... I don't know what it is with him lately. He's gotten in the habit of just, like, attacking my... Every time that I start recording, he gets frustrated because he hears me talking, and my cats like to be talked to. I don't know if your animals like to be talked to. But, for example, I have one cat where you're not allowed to touch her. Like, she will sit on you, and she will tolerate you, but if you pet her, she then becomes angry and stops purring. But if she sits on your lap and you talk to her, like you just whisper to the cat in, like, a weird tone of voice, she will start purring, and she's just totally happy because you're conversing with her. And the cats hear me talking, and they get frustrated because I'm not talking to them or something. And so they come in here, and they just start, like, bum-rushing my mic stand for some reason. We've got, like, an hour left right here. I should probably do something with water. Let's go ahead and melt a half liter. And then we'll boil a half liter. It takes the... I'd be dying from starvation. It definitely... It takes the edge off our water supply. I mean, that point five right there is going to be enough to get me out of the thirsty threshold. Ooh, alliteration. I like it. The Thirsty Threshold. The Thirsty Threshold Throng. I don't know. I was trying to think of other words that start with TH, but I'm untalented like that. So, unfortunately, I ran out of words after, like, three words. Ah, well, what are you going to do? Kanye, I am not. Let's go back over here. Drink a little bit of Agua. The Agua. And now that we have done that, we can eat some venison. Probably get food poisoning again. Hooray, we're not poisoned. Delicious, life-sustaining food. 
We are taking risks, though. There is the possibility that we might become ill fairly shortly. All right, so our hugger's looking good. We've got enough time left in the day to where I can hunt that deer, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go shoot that deer, and we'll get our next meal lined up. I like how the light comes through the floor right there. I wonder if they've noticed that. Developers, the light comes through the floor from the, ready to die. from the front. You're not going to die. God, you're so melodramatic. Calm down. I'm going to die. All is lost. Woe is survivor. That's your name, Woe? I mean, it's easy to remember, I guess. My name is Woe, and I am a survivor. Where did that deer go? I would assume he went that way more than likely, but I don't see him off on the lake. So did he just, like, despawn suddenly? I know sometimes they just vanish. They're just, like, out. They decide that they are no longer going to exist. There he is. I knew he wandered off somewhere. Not too far, but we've got to take another risky gunshot, unfortunately. I'm hoping we can hunt and clean this guy before nightfall. It's minus three right now. We'll probably be okay. We've got enough food to where it allows us to scavenge for a little bit more wood tomorrow. Actually, I'm carrying around wood with me right now, aren't I? Oh, sigh. What's actually comprising the majority of this weight right now? Water. Okay. So water is going to be our principal issue right now. I don't know which deer I should go after. That deer is closer, but that one's walking cattywumpus to me, and I can follow the tracks back home. Then again, he might also see me. I'm just going to hang tight for a second. If he wants to get closer, he can get closer. That's his call. That was the most awkward railroad crossing I've ever seen. I think he sprained all of his ankles. Yeah, he saw us, unfortunately, and that shot's too long to where I can't rely on... They do have a line of sight, so unfortunately... Let me see if I can get this one then. Hopefully his hearing is not so good. I'm hiding behind a tree! The natural deterrent to deer eyesight. Trees. Buy yourself one. I would prefer that he be kind of sideways in case the shot goes wide. Uh, I still don't feel good about that. Like, it misses so much that I never want to squeeze the trigger unless I've got, like, a point-blank perfect shot. Oh my god, that was me. That wasn't the game. That was me. That was me just being a derp. I got him with that one, though, so that's okay. God. Well, there goes another couple days of survival. Worst case scenario is I can go get myself mauled by a wolf once a day. And then rip the meat up off him. All right. We'll get the 8.2 kilograms off him. Go ahead and harvest that real fast. It shouldn't get dark. We should be okay. It'll be dusky by the time we go back. All right. Just got ourselves a deer. Pretty much couldn't have gone any better. Now we're going to sprint our way back to our house. Following our footprints back from where we came. We'll get that all settled. Then we'll go back out to maybe the trapper's cabin and take a look around behind that thing. And once we take a look out from behind... Oh, yeah. We are overburdened, aren't we? Okay. Well, can't help it for right now. Let's go ahead and we're just going to go back home. If we have to do it slowly, we have to do it slowly, but it can't be helped at this point. It's just something we're going to have to live with. Come on. Up the hill. I believe. It's not that long of a walk anyway, so I'm not that concerned about it. I'm still kind of freaked out about the way the wolves' eyes glow in the dark. That's actually a freaky little touch that I didn't know they added to the game. I thought about that after the last episode got recorded, and I was like, damn, that was a freaky deer. I'm sorry, that was a, it wasn't a deer. That was a freaky wolf. The deer, I don't like when anything's eyes glow at you out of the darkness, though. Like, sometimes when you go out on a geological survey, it'll be like midnight, and you'll be sitting around the fire with like two or three other people, and you just Get look out into the dark, here. and the campfire will flicker shelter. off the eyes of coyotes and shit out in the darkness that are way off in the distance. Creepy as hell. Creepy as hell. Rat's eyes do it, too. And there are some big-ass rats out in the desert and out in the forest. You wouldn't think, but because you never see them. But, yep, there are some serious rats, like combat rats, out in the middle. <laughs> Comrats. Like, there are some very, very serious rats out in the middle of nowhere, and they're attracted to fire, too. So you got to watch out for them. That's why you always step on your sleeping bag a little bit before you get in it so you don't get yourself bit by a rabies-infected rat or anything. Also, it's for snakes. But... I don't know. I'm super paranoid about snakes. I've had so many run-ins with rattlers and things that I'm way, way paranoid about them. 
Like I stamp out my sh- I stamp out my shoes super carefully when I get up in the morning. I stick a stick up in there. Like I I definitely root around a little bit. Not so worried about scorpions though. Like I've had don't feel so good. I've had a scorpion in my boot before when I shook it out in the morning and I don't worry about scorpions quite as much as snakes. I don't know. I mean, scorpion stings. The scorpion sting that I had actually wasn't that bad. I got stung by a scorpion one time while I was sleeping. He got up in my tent and stung me, and I never found the little bastard either. He's probably still out in all my gear out in the garage, but... I'm not sure I can carry much more. Let's go ahead and light this thing up right now. I think this is going to use up the remainder of our wood supply probably, but we'll have to live with that for right now. Let's go ahead and light up another fire. We'll spend the remainder of the day getting our supplies isolated, making sure that we have plenty of meat to eat so that we can greet the next day and actually accomplish something, although we haven't accomplished anything in like 10 episodes. I'm starting to feel like this game is getting to the point with Project Zomboid where I'm just doing the same like repetitive actions over and over again. I don't know how much meat we have, but five hours seems about right. We'll probably be able to pull it in there. And any of the extra time we'll use on water. I'd lay down right here if I thought I'd ever wake up again. <laughs> again? Again, hmm? That must be like a regional accent or something. If I ever woke up again! I don't know. We say it again. Like it's spelled like U G. It's spelled like U H G E N N. Again. Again sounds much more. I don't know. It sounds more regal. It definitely sounds more fancy. So you fancy, huh? <laughs> Let's go ahead and we'll get the venison cooked up. I don't know how much we have. I think we should be able to get it done. I may have overstoked the fire, but that'll still leave us with one cedar and two fir firewood, which means that we're still in decent shape on our fire supplies. I'm not that worried about firewood gathering, to be honest. It's usually pretty easy. You just spend a whole day doing it, and then you just unload and armload. The only way that it actually nerfs you is because it makes you use up a lot more calories searching for it. Hiking around the hills, trying to get yourself a little bit more food. I love roasting food over a fire. We got this big grill thing that we used to use when we go out where it was basically just a big grill grate. That's all that it was. It was probably like a big four foot by four foot square that was shaped like the top of a barbecue grill. And then we just find some rocks when we got to the campsite. We'd set them up and just sit the grill on top of that and just cook the food on top of it. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing better than a sizzling dinner when you've been out hiking your ass all over some hills and rocks and plains and shit for the last nine hours. It's like sit down in your field chair and just be like, mm. Every geologist has a field chair, by the way. It's just one of those foldy chairs that you take with you when you go camping. A camping chair, basically. But we tend to pride ourselves on ours. Like, we spend a bunch of money on ours because that's, like, the only creature comfort you have when you're out in the middle of nowhere. And so if you have a real nice chair, geologists will be like, Ooh, I see you got yourself see you, see you got yourself a nice chair there. Where'd you get it? And we have, like, full conversations about each other's chairs because there's nothing else to talk about when you're out in the middle of the boonies. Like, I see that we're sitting in the pitch black. That conversation only lasts so long. Oh, our hunger and our thirst is looking pretty unsatisfactory. Let's drink water first. Drink that. That'll get us squared away. And now that we've done that, we need to feed ourselves. So start up on some of this deer flesh, and then we'll go to sleep for the night. Yeah, it's only 1 a.m. It's not that bad. That's not even close to my bedtime. I typically go to bed around, I don't know, like 2 or 3 a.m., but I'm a workaholic like that. Like, sometimes I, I end up staying up way too late just because there's, like, YouTube things that need to get done. And unfortunately, upload times are what they are. Render times are what they are. And I gotta stay up and babysit them. I don't like leaving things unattended. That's just, I'm a control freak like that. I know people that leave their render queues up running for days, and they just don't worry about it. But for me, I don't know. I like to sit and stare at it while it runs. Like in a window on the side. Not a mean. Yada da boo boo. Let's go ahead and grab that over there. That's Bay Area for you know what I mean in case. I don't know. I explained it one time. You say yada. I saw somebody knows you're from the Bay Area right there. You go yada. And it's just shorthand for you know what I mean. Which became yada mean. Which then became yada. You just kind of roll your. It's almost like if you were in Spanish. It's almost like you were saying yada. Like you just kind of roll your tongue a little bit. And there you go. Bay Area 101. Simple slang. Go back over here. Other words. Bootsy. Although Bootsy's a little bit outdated. Nobody says Bootsy anymore. But Bootsy was a thing. It's still a funny word to throw around every now and again just because it's a hella goofy word. Like Bay Area slang tends to be really, really goofy. So like Bootsy. Bootsy means that something's all tore up. Ain't acting right. So be like, man, my car's Bootsy right now. I gotta take that shit to the mechanic. What else do we have? We got all kinds of slang. 
Instead of saying like, you know what I mean, you can say you smell me. You can say all kinds of stuff. It depends how deep you are in like Oakland and Richmond too, because the slang moves around a little bit the deeper in you get. Like it turns into a whole nother language by the time you get out to like Vallejo and like there's basic terms like yada da and Bootsy and you smell me. Like there's basic stuff like that. But then it just gets all kinds of crazy once you get out to like Vallejo and Oakland and Richmond and Hayward where it sounds like people aren't even speaking English anymore. At that point they even lose me because they're way more bay than I am I guess. I suppose. What do I want to do right now? I think I'm going to hunt some wood. Our wood supply is looking a little shitty at the moment so let's go ahead and handle that. Pardon my French. I've never understood that saying like when you swear and you're like pardon my French. I've never understood that. I don't feel like French people swear on average more than anybody else. I mean, swearing seems to be the universal language. It appears as though it's pretty cold out right now, so we may not be able to forage for very long. I'm just going to go an hour at a time, and as we find things, we find things. So there's two fur wood. We're freezing to death again. I love freezing to death. Let's eat some food. There we go. Keep ourselves all nice and fueled up. Damn. I'm freezing. Eh, we're probably not going to die. I'll let my condition suffer a little bit. I don't tend to mind it that much, actually. Ooh, we didn't get nothing. Oh, storm's coming in. I think we could still get away with it. Whatever. We need to spend like a day just hunting wood, and that's it. Ooh, skunk twice. Okay, well that's not acceptable. Sounds like there's something near me right now. If you're wondering why I'm looking around all panicked. I'm not ready to die. It definitely sounds like there's something walking around. I don't know. I wonder if the wood respawns. Like if I come back up in here and I forage for an hour. I wonder if the wood like respawns in any given location or once you've tapped it out, you've tapped it out. Yeah, it looks like it comes back. Like it gave us a different... It didn't say you were unable to find wood. It said like there is no wood or something like that. Like, it definitely gave us, like, a, yeah, that's not gonna work type message. Well, if I can hunt down reclaimed wood in here, I might as well just stay inside and do it since it's so cold outside. I don't see any real reason to, like, run myself ragged trying to get wood outside when I can get it inside just as easily. And, yep, yeah, laugh all you want at that. I, I said it that way on purpose. Just let it go. Let it fly. Let it be free like a dove in the sky. Alright, let's forge some more wood. No hatchet, though. There we go. We'll go for three hours and we'll just kind of see where this goes. I teach you like, so people in the Bay Area call each other Cuddy too, but don't use that word if you're not like, if you're in the Bay and you're not from like the Bay and you call somebody Cuddy, they're going to test you and it's not going to turn out well. Like I wouldn't use that word and I grew up here. <laughs> and by test you, I mean they're going to give you a little quiz. They're gonna, they're gonna start like, basically, it's like saying, so, I made this mistake one time, like, I speak Spanish very, very poorly. Like, I speak Spanish, but only kinda. And so I made this mistake one time, this Spanish lady comes into my, or this Hispanic lady comes into my store, and she's like, do you speak Spanish? You know, she asked me in Spanish if I speak Spanish, and I said, the worst phrase you could possibly say if you don't speak very good, like, Spanish. I said, mas o menos. You should not say that. And so basically she just like went off and I lost her after like the first sentence, right? That's what's gonna happen if you call somebody Cuddy in the Bay Area. If you're like, hey, what's up Cuddy? Like, they're gonna test you. They're just gonna go off using all kinds of slang and then you're gonna look super lost. And I don't know, people like to fool around here. People like to fool around here, so it's just not worth it. That wood pile looks okay. I mean, it's not the best wood pile ever, but I'm gonna keep, I guess, digging around for a little bit. We're going through our food supply pretty rapidly. But I guess that's the way that we can spend the day, just salvaging wood up. I mean, we're only getting reclaimed wood out of here, which is a little unfortunate. We're going through our food supply pretty quickly, too. But if I can get enough wood for right now, we don't have to worry about it in the future. So there's three more reclaimed woods. We got one an hour. And that puts our calorie store down pretty low. Fatigue's up pretty high. Thirst is up pretty high. Probably not the best way that I could spend my time trying to get my hands on some wood, but still. I don't know. I just want to front load a little bit. Like, I really do want to front load our supplies a tiny bit so that I have to spend so many episodes running around looking for wood. But I think we're just about up with this episode anyway, so I think I'm going to break it off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me at the Nerdcast for the next episode of The Long Dark. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and I do.